2011, Laverne Gordon founded Love Like Now, which promotes year-round awareness around domestic violence. She is the author of The Legacy He Left Me, an international and award-winning domestic violence memoir, which chronicles her experience as a child witness to abuse and becoming a survivor following a two-year abusive relationship. Laverne, on behalf of Kit, the entire advisory board, everyone at NEFA and the board, we would like to say thank you for your 20 years in the equipment leasing industry working for Debbie Monison. I'll be very brief, um, but I would be remiss if I didn't thank a few folks um, for this insanely huge honor. First of all, thank you to Leasing News, um, to Reed Rakovich for nominating me for this award. Um, I actually got the text from uh, Jesse Johnson, who is somewhere here, uh, that I had won <laughs> the award. Um, and Reed hadn't told me that she had nominated me, and so I was floored, and I checked with about seven people to see if they'd gotten this right. Um, but I'll go back very quickly to 1999, when I came to my first leasing conference under Debbie Monison, who many of you in the room know. Um, uh, but at that time, I was going through an abusive relationship Sorry, that she didn't know. Picture. I kept that secret really, really well hidden um, for the for the next two years, and then I I, I jumped ship um, once the relationship ended because I couldn't focus. I was also going to Suffolk University at nights in Boston at the time, and working entry level with Debbie, and um, again. No one knew because I held on to that shit that didn't belong to me for all that time. And it was 10 years later when I decided, I didn't decide, I was pushed. I was dared by some friends to take part in a local beauty pageant and ended up winning the thing and had to go on into LA to, for the nationals and ended up winning that thing too. So now I gotta pick a platform to advocate for. Domestic violence was an easy choice because of my history. Well, I told Debbie the reason behind me picking that platform because I had then gone back to work for her at that time as well. And uh, she was floored. She had zero idea that I had gone through this thing for two years and I had covered it up so well. So the message that I wanna send here today is that there are many women in your midst that are going through this issue and all they need is permission from you to speak up. So I charge each and every single company leader in here today, if you have a position of power to infiltrate this issue in your workplace, do it. It doesn't take a lot. Invite speakers to come out and share resources. Learn about the resources in your communities and find out where help is. Put posters up in your bathrooms. Post them up in the kitchens about where they can get help. Make it okay to talk about this because again, this is shame that does not belong to victims and you can be the ones to be part of the solution. I wanna thank Jesse Johnson. <laughs> Jesse, please stand up for giving me the opportunity last year when he reached out to me, when he and his, when his wife started a publishing company, he's the marketing portion of it, and reached out to me to say, Laverne, you need to become one of our authors. You really have a story to tell. He's been following my, my journey with our organization, Love Life Now Foundation, for the past 10 years, and he said, I really want you to come on board. This is really what we want to promote through our publishing company. And so that from there came the legacy he left me. Many of you have embraced this book on the book tour as we've 
follow along through Equipment Finance Cares. How many of you know about Equipment Finance Cares? Yes. If you have not had an event, an Equipment Finance Cares event, this is my shameless pitch for you to do so. <laughs> and so Equipment Finance Cares came about because Jesse really wanted to push the message of this book. And it takes a lot for a man to say, that we want the issue of awareness, of domestic violence awareness, to go far and wide, not just with you writing the book. And he came up with the idea to have thought leadership panels and um, the discussion around domestic violence awareness on every single um, city that we hit. So I just want to thank you, Jesse. I appreciate you. I appreciate Debbie Monison for giving me my start in this industry and for rocking with me because there's been many times of jump ship and she says, come on back, every single time. Now you guys know me that I come to the conferences and I represent her only in this capacity, but it's been an insane honor to connect with many of you individually over the years and you shared your stories with me with domestic violence. Those of you that have sisters, those of you that have uh, 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 daughters, cousins, to speak to me on that level, I have appreciated you more than you ever know. It's been cathartic for me to be able to help you. So thank you. Keep the message of awareness going. I am wearing the color of purple today intentionally because it is the best violence color. Um, and I do want to shout out uh, a survivor that gave me this watch and I'm wearing it in honor of her, Mariana, back in my hometown. Um, she, we, I helped her with resources some years ago. Uh, she then went on to uh, exit the relationship safely, and then she came full throttle and, and supplied the clothing for our domestic violence uh, empowerment fashion show, where all the models are survivors of abuse. And she was the, the, the sponsor for those clothes. And she gave me this, met, this watch. I don't wear watches. There have, been, there have been a few of you that have asked for help to put it on today, because I don't know how, but I wore it in honor of her. The glass, is, the base of it is purple, and again, I just want to thank you guys. Again, this is an insane honor. I went over my two minutes, I apologize. Thank you. <laughs>